We come here today to celebrate the life of Daryl Gordon, a FAO with the Cincinnati Fire Department, and a true hero. But a hero is not defined by one act of bravery, but by a lifetime of preparation. Heroes, heroes have certain characteristics that set them apart from everyone else. They are driven to do their best, to reach beyond what they believe their maximum effort could be. Heroes are consistent. They know the right things to do, and they do it. They strive to make everyone around them better, at home, at work, at play, because they care about people and strive to make everyone's life a little richer. People love to be around them because their personalities are infectious. They are confident, but not prideful. They smile easily and have a way to put everyone at ease. But most of all, they put the welfare of others above their own. When the opportunity arises to put themselves in harm's way to save another, they know exactly what to do. No hesitation, no question, no doubt. No matter what the role he was in, a husband, a father, a firefighter, a bomb tech, a rescue tech, a fire operator, or a friend, Daryl Gordon was a hero. Daryl has touched the lives of most of us here today, teaching, teasing, helping, always trying to help us strive to be better. We will all remember his laugh, his smile, and his mischievous twinkle in his eye when he was up to something. And we are all better because we knew him. We will keep his memory alive by practicing the lessons he has taught us. Angela, your loss is unimaginable, but we are dedicated to be here for you forever. And Angelique and Chelsea, I know that your dad has prepared you with life lessons and great memories. You'll need to rely on those with the days to come. And when people talk to you and ask you about your dad, you can tell them, my dad was a hero. Mayday, mayday, a firefighter is down. Mayday, mayday, our friend Daryl is gone. Mayday, mayday, how do we move on? Cincinnati is heartbroken, wondering how to move on. Thinking about this over the weekend, I found inspiration in the song Into the Fire, which was written by Bruce Springsteen in honor of the firefighters who died on 9-11, a song that clearly applies to Daryl Gordon. It was dark, too dark to see. You held me in the light you gave. You lay your hand on me. Then walked into the darkness of your smoky grave somewhere up the stairs into the fire. I need you near, but love and duty called you someplace higher, somewhere up the stairs into the fire. Today, we mourn fire apparatus operator and bomb technician, firefighter Daryl Gordon, who was called someplace higher. We come together to mourn a man who was known as a teddy bear, quick to laugh, quick to lend a hand, and someone who mentored others. A man who dedicated his life to public service but knew how to have fun, enjoying his Woodford Reserve, his friends, his fraternity Kappa brothers. A man who gave this city 30 years, loved his wife, and raised two beautiful daughters. 
We mourn that he will not enjoy a long and deserved retirement. And most importantly, and tragically, we mourn that, this t that his time with his wife Angela and daughters Angelique and Chelsea was cut short. But we also know that Daryl Gordon was a smart man and knew the risks associated with his chosen profession. He had the love and duty to be called someplace higher. His faith was tested and he came through. He did not waver, he did not retreat. The song that I mentioned, Into the Fire, is written not to give comfort to the fallen firefighter who did his duty, but is written to ask the fallen firefighter who has already given his life to give those of us left behind even more, to provide comfort to us even from the grave. Bruce ends his song by asking the fallen firefighter to help us, singing, May your strength give us strength. May your faith give us faith. May your hope give us hope. And may your love give us love. We need Daryl more than he needs us. And do we share Daryl's faith? We all want to, and we say we do. After tragedies like September 11th, or Oscar Armstrong, and now Daryl Gordon, we rededicate ourselves to valuing public service. But in between these tragic occasions, we often forget that our ability to pursue our fortune, love, and happiness depends on the public servants, the first responders, that give us the safety to pursue our dreams. Our freedom depends on a subset of our community putting our safety ahead of their own. And those people are called police officers and firefighters. First responders create societies that can be called civil, that tame the natural evils of life, that prevent the strong from overpowering the weak, that save lives from natural or man-made disasters. Because sometimes there are evils that would do us harm, and there are fires that will burn us if not extinguished. Sometimes we need big, strong teddy bears to protect us from hidden dangers. And sometimes we need that bear's strength to be freed from a door that is closed. Not all of us are called to be first responders, but all of us are called to make service to our fellow man and woman part of our lives. Today's funeral serves as a reminder to us to share Daryl's strength, faith, hope, and love. To believe that love and duty are real and bind us together. To believe that those who die for those ideals live forever in our hearts. And so we come together today to share genuine grief for our losses, especially for the losses of Angela, Angelique, and Chelsea. And we commit ourselves to offering them our help. Let's make sure that Daryl's family knows that God is holding them tightly, too. And as mayor, I thank Daryl Gordon for his service to our city. We are eternally grateful. But we also come together to hear what Daryl Gordon is telling us. He is telling us to live our faith and to believe that putting the well-being of others ahead of our own will be our greatest joy and our ultimate salvation. It is hard to believe that right now in our current grief, but this truth is all around us. In the laughter of our children, the love of our spouses, the good cheer of our friends, and sometimes even in our songs. So let us pray that we might hear Daryl's intercession. Mayday, mayday, a firefighter is down. May his strength give us strength. Mayday, mayday, our friend Daryl is gone. 
May his faith give us faith. Mayday, mayday, how do we go on? May his hope give us hope. May his, may his love give us love. Daryl, we miss you dearly, but love and duty called you someplace higher, somewhere up the stairs into the fire. We invite our city manager, Harry Black, to come forward. Good morning. It is truly an honor to be standing before you today to say a few words about, in the most literal sense, a hero. Daryl's family and friends have experienced a sudden, tragic loss, and our hearts go out to you. Although we all have lost someone close to us at some point, we still cannot begin to imagine your despair and pain. However, we stand ready to help and to support you in your moment of sorrow. This past week has been very difficult and somewhat painful for our city family, and yet has pulled us together closer as a community and as a city. None of us in city service have been hit harder than Daryl's brothers and sisters in the fire department. In the coming weeks and months, on behalf of the entire city family, we are here with you and for you. That's what families do. T today is not how we, how we die as each of us will, but rather how we are and what we are remembered for in our living. Today is about Daryl Gordon. I did not have the privilege of knowing Daryl, but I have come to know a bit about who he was and what he stood for. Daryl exemplified the definition of public servant on and off the job. Let's talk about what service really means. Peter chapter 4 verse 10 reads, each one should use whatever gift he has received to serve others. That's what Daryl did. Public service is an admirable, often underappreciated profession. Public servants are called to do the difficult jobs, the hard jobs that no one else wants to do nor may have the courage to do. For better or worse, in moments like today, we remember the sacrifice that our first responders make and the risk they take on a daily basis to keep us all safe. They demonstrate a commitment to selflessness every time they clock in, every time they jump on the tr that truck, every time they walk into a burning building to save lives. They know that every time they leave the firehouse, there is a possibility, as remote as it may be, they will not return, but they still do it anyway to keep us safe. Today, we honor Daryl Gordon. We honor his profession and we honor his sacrifice. Daryl believed in making the world a better place. You don't walk into a burning building looking to help your fellow man unless you have this notion deeply woven into your DNA. We will honor Daryl in the way we treat and interact with one another. And we will honor him in how we continue to support Daryl's family, his wife and daughters, and his brothers and sisters in the fire department in any way necessary during this most challenging time. You may be distraught, but you are not alone. I cannot express my gratitude for the sacrifices Daryl made over the last almost 30 years as a firefighter. As we all try in our own way to make sense of this sudden loss, it is in our living that our impact will be realized in our death. Let Daryl's death impact all of our living in a way that changes not only our lives, but those around us. We invite Cincinnati Firefighters Local 48 President Matt Alter. Today, April 1st, 2015, 
on the 162nd anniversary of the first fully paid professional fire department in the United States, the Cincinnati Fire Department, we gather to honor and more importantly to celebrate the life of a man who truly epitomizes what it was to be, what it is to be, a professional firefighter. Our brother, fire apparatus operator, Daryl Gordon. To Angela, Chelsea, Angelique, personally and on behalf of Cincinnati Firefighters Union Local 48, on behalf of the 857 members, I want to extend my deepest condolences and sympathies. You have lost a husband and a father, but on that fateful day, March 26, 2015, you gained 857 big brothers and sisters. To know Daryl was to know greatness. Daryl was a man's man, a firefighter's firefighter, a proud union brother, and despite his time on the job, he showed the same love and enthusiasm as if he started just yesterday. For 30 years, Daryl served the Cincinnati Fire Department and its citizens, and if the job wasn't dangerous enough, over 25 years as a bomb technician. Daryl died doing what he loved. Along with his fellow firefighters, his actions led to the rescue of 12 innocent civilians that day at that fire. Twelve people are alive today because of the actions of brother Daryl Gordon and his fellow firefighters. Daryl would be proud of his brothers and sisters to know that they have come together to support each other during this tough time, and more importantly, to support his family. He would not want us to dwell on the incident that took place on March 26, but to learn, to grow, and to improve. As Daryl would say, let's go kid, we've got a job to do. We will mourn and we will continue to do our job. To paraphrase the words of the late Mother Jones, we will mourn the dead, but we will continue to fight for the living. Rest in peace, our mentor, our friend, our brother, fire apparatus operator, Daryl Gordon. Job well done, Daryl. We'll take it from here. Stay safe. Invite forward our brother, District Chief, Rafael Prophet. Good morning. My name is Rafael Prophet, District Chief of District 1, Unit 1, where the cycle starts. Daryl being a traveling driver made me his uh, immediate supervisor. Although a longtime friend, I am not one of his closest friends on the department. Daryl had many friends, such as retired firefighter Jeff Harris, firefighter Willie Jones, Phil Robert Anderson, and close friend, neighbor, and confidant, Captain Chris Miller. Any of these brothers are better suited to speak in Daryl's behalf, but I ask them to allow me to speak. You see, as his district chief, I felt obligated. No, I felt honored to speak of Daryl's caliber and great character. As I recall, nearly three years ago, he and I began working in District 1, Unit 1, where the cycle starts. At the same time, he, recent, he had recently been promoted to FAO and I had just returned from an overseas military deployment. It was also my first time back in suppression in nearly 10 years after being assigned to 40-hour staff. I didn't know the firefighters very well, so I sought Durrell's counsel. I told him of my anxiety and asked if I could come to him from time to time for advice of the firefighters. You see, as a traveling substitute driver, I rotated Durrell through each company of District 1, Unit 1, where the cycle starts, periodically. Durrell simply replied, sure, Chief. 
I felt better knowing I had someone of Durrell's caliber and reputation as my pulse, my barometer, my command sergeant major. When Durrell joined the department in 1985, his character and core values had been shaped. Raised in a loving home, but raised in a loving but disciplinary home, Durrell's moral compass was well set. As his sister Dorothy told me, they knew implicitly the difference between right and wrong. Growing up in nurturing Woodlawn, Durrell learned the value of community, where his compassion for his fellow man became ingrained. Playing on a championship high school football team showed him the importance of teamwork. But according to Durrell, the best decision he made was joining the distinguished fraternity of Kappa Alpha Psi. Not solely for his dear fraternity's precepts of achievement and service, or the lifelong friendships he established and sustained, but it is while pledging that he met his Angela. You see, Durrell you see, when Durrell joined the fire department, it immediately became a better place. Fire recruit classmate Robert Anderson told me Durrell was aggressive from the start. Just like a championship offensive lineman, he fought fires by always pushing forward. Durrell was assigned to Engine 14 as an EOD tech, or explosive ordnance disposal, for over 20 years back in the day before robotics. He was known nationally throughout the EOD community. His moral compass was true and straight. There were no grays, only black and white, or right and wrong. That's why it was easy. In the 80s, when the city had instituted its no smoking policy, for Durrell to strip the cigarette out of the fire chief's mouth and say, no smoking in the firehouse, chief. His sense of community is evident by, his outpour by the outpouring of affection for the citizens of Glendale. His compassion for his fellow man is obvious by the encouragement and dignity of work he provided to several men who were down on his luck. His fraternal bond was strong as displayed by his many years of dedicated service in the Cincinnati African American Firefighter Association and local firefighters union, Local 48. So every three weeks on a Sunday, in District 1, Unit 1, when the cycle starts, we will defend our brother Darrell's spirit by renewing, calibrating, or resetting our moral compass, strengthening our community, sustain uh, compassion for our fellow man, and solidify our fraternal bonds. Thank you. We invite family representative John Gordon, Sr. Please come forward. Good morning, everybody. I've been asked by my family to represent my uncle Daryl Gordon, who is my father. I'm going to give you guys a little history about Daryl that you guys don't hear about the fire department. Daryl was a great family man. Daryl was a great friend. And that's the kind of by everybody that's here and everybody that's outside and was lined up on the street. If you came across Daryl Gordon, you were family. You was not ever seen as a friend or anything else. You were family, and that goes for everybody. Daryl always had his hands open for anybody in need, whether it was just to talk to, whether it was a favor that you needed done, whether it was some money, even though he's only going to give you 50 cents. You know, yeah, he's a penny puncher. But Daryl always had his hands open and never asked for anything in return. Daryl's legacy will go down, one, as a fireman, two, as the greatest husband and father there is walking this earth. And that word greatest is carried a long time by people that don't really know what it means. He was a true friend. He was a true mentor. He was a true fireman. He loved that job. He really did love that job. From the age of nine years old, he was chasing the fire trucks on his bike. He knew what he wanted to be then. But also, he was a great husband and he was a great father to more than just his family. He always was there for everybody and never asked for anything in return. So this is an honor to be up here representing this man. Sorry. Daryl is going to be missed physically, 
but he is not going to be missed spiritually because he lives in every last one of us because he touched every last one of us. I love you, Daryl, and you're never gone in my heart. To Angie and the kids, big brother's here. I'm taking that torch. Thank you. I love you. Also, real quick, to the guys that serve with him, I said I was going to do this. Can I please have the he heavy operators team of Andrew 14 stand up, please, if they're in the crowd? If those guys can stand. Those three gentlemen, I believe Jeff, and there's like three others in the back. Please still stand. Stand. Please stay. Those three gentlemen and the guys in the back, they brought Daryl home. That day that they went into that fire and they say those 12 people, those people you see standing brought this great man home so we can send him off right. I thank you. We had that discussion the other day. Remember what I told you. To the rest of the firefighters, one thing Daryl's always going to stand and say to us is continue to do what you do. You signed up to this job for a reason. Keep being heroes and saving lives. He does not want to be seen any other way because that's what he loved to do since the age of nine years old. Thank you. Let the church say amen. amen. As we gather, we recall why we're here. It's simply to ask God to, to guide us in the days forward, but to bless us in this time Will we celebrate the life of our brother Daryl? Will you please stand as we offer a prayer to our almighty and loving God? O oh God, to whom mercy and forgiveness belong, hear our prayers this day on behalf of your servant, Daryl Eugene Gordon whom you have called out of this world because he has put his hope in and trust in you. Command that he be carried safely home to heaven and come to enjoy your eternal ward, reward where he gathers with all the saints around the throne, praising you in glory. We pray this in the name of Jesus. Amen? Amen. Please be seated. A reading from the Book of Wisdom. The just man, though he die early, shall be at rest. For the age that is honorable comes not with the passing of time, nor can it be measured in terms of years. Rather, understanding is the crown for men, and an unsullied life the attainment of old age. He who pleased God was loved. He who lived among sinners was transported, snatched away, lest wickedness pervert the mind, or deceit beguile his soul. For the witchery of paltry things obscures what is right, and the world of desire transforms the innocent mind. Having become perfect in a short while, he reached the fullness of a long career. For his soul was pleasing to the Lord, therefore he sped him out of the midst of wickedness, but the people saw and did not understand, nor did they take this into account. The word of the Lord.
Shepherd me, O oh God, beyond my wants, beyond my fears, from death into life. Shepherd me, O oh God, beyond my wants, beyond my fears, from death into life. God is my shepherd so nothing shall I want I rest in the meadows of faithfulness and love I walk by the quiet waters of Shepherd me, O oh God, beyond my wants, beyond my fears, from death into life. Gently you raise me and heal my weary soul. You lead me by pathways of righteousness and truth. My spirit shall sing the music of your name. Shepherd me, O oh God, behind my wants beyond my fears from death into life though I should wander the valley of death I fear no for you are at my side, your rod and your staff, my comfort and my hope. Shepherd me, O oh God, behind my wants, behind my fears from death into life. You have set me a banquet of love in the face of hatred, crowning me with love beyond my power to hold. Shepherd me, O oh God, beyond my wants, beyond my fears, from death into life. Surely your kindness and mercy follow me all the days of my life. I will dwell in the house of the Lord forever. Shepherd me, O oh God, beyond my wants, beyond my fears, from death into
A reading from the letter of Paul to the Romans. Whoever observes the day observes it for the Lord. None of us lives for oneself, and no one dies for oneself. For if we live, we live for the Lord, and if we die, we die for the Lord. So then whether we live or die, we are the Lord's. For this is why Christ died and came to life, that he might be Lord of both the dead and the living. For we shall all stand before the judgment seat of God, for it is written, As I live, says the Lord, every knee shall bend before me, and every tongue shall give praise to God. So then each of us shall give an account of himself to God. The word of the Lord. from the Holy Gospel according to John. Jesus said to his disciples, Do not let your hearts be troubled. You have faith in God, also have faith in me. In my Father's house there are many dwelling places. If there were not, would I have told you that I am going to prepare a place for you? And if I go and prepare a place for you, I will come back again and take you to myself so that where I am, you may also be. Where I am going, you know the way. Thomas said to him, Master, we do not know the way. Jesus said, I am the way, the truth, and the life. No one comes to the Father except through me. The Gospel of the Lord. Please be seated. say to, to Angela and Angelique and Chelsea, the family that has gathered, that the Archdiocese and the citizens of this great city we call Cincinnati and, and people around the nation have been praying for your husband, Daryl, your father, your loved one, your friend. And we gather our prayers for you, but also for him that we, as we gather, we simply thank God for allowing us to share these 54 years that he gave us. We come to understand that that 54 years is not a long time. And it, it rings true for us when we recall the words of Reverend Dr. Martin Luther King Jr. when he said, longevity has its place. We come to know that no one wants to die early, but God has given us the days he has given us, and we must use them as a servant. And as we've heard the words today, Daryl was a servant. 
You know, we hear in our gospel reading from John, it says, do not let your hearts be troubled. Now you tell me how that's so. And losing a loved one or losing a friend, how can your heart not be troubled? How can your anxiety not be harsh? How can it not be painful? So what is Jesus really trying to say to us? He's saying to us is that don't let your anxiety, don't let your pain take away your joy. Don't let it lead you away from the very God who breathed the spirit into you and gave you life. The God whom you depended on in all of these days is the same God who stands with you today to say, I know you're hurt, I know your pain. You know, people ask me, what do you say to people in the midst of their grief? In the midst of their mourning, you know, there is no word and there is no phrase. We just simply learn how to be present to one another. You know, Pope Francis used the coin, the phrase for us, the art of accompaniment, where we stand before one another and we respect the hallowed ground of each. It is the way that we walk with one another in our pain, for there are no words. We know that in our pain, it is ours. Sometimes we try to console ourselves by saying, someone else has a greater pain than this, but this is ours, and we claim it. So we have to give ourselves permission to mourn, to grieve. And there is no one way to do this. Mourning and grief takes time. It takes energy. It drains you even, but it's something we, we must do. For our human spirit, our soul yearns to be made whole. It has a desire to be healed. And in this moment, part of that healing is, is mourning and grief. And we have to allow ourselves to do it. No one lives for oneself and no one dies for oneself. We, we live and die for the Lord. We hear in the words from our speakers earlier, in the words of remembrance, and I've heard some of the stories, that Darrell was a man and he knew who he was. Not only did he know who he was, he shared that with others, and it impacted their lives in a way that they too were changed. You know, you don't just grow up to be that way. You have to be formed to do that. You know, what we miss in today's society are men and women, parents and grandparents, mentors and guardians, neighbors who take the time to say, I'm going to share my life so that others will know what right and wrong is all about. We've lost a whole connection about what it means to grow up in community, to grow up surrounded by family, so that when we need correction, we don't have to go far to bump into a, a, a guardrail. We know that there are people who are there to correct us. We live in a world where there's no correcting going on. And Daryl was the one who said in his family that they knew what was right and wrong because their parents taught them that. We live in a 21st century where our parents don't want to be parents. Our grandparents don't want to be grandparents. Everybody wants to do what they want to do, but we are each called to do something. And what we're called to do is to do it well. So as we gather, we simply thank God for this wonderful example of a man who impacted lives. He started in his own home, loved his wife, loved his children, loved his family, but he loved his brothers and sisters in blue. He loved them, and in return, you loved him. And we simply have to give ourselves time to reflect, for we are celebrating a life, a life lived. God called him. God called him to be a servant. And what does it mean? What are the characteristics of being a public servant? First, you have to realize that you were called. If you don't feel called, then you lose, as I heard, you lose your compass about who you are and what you're called to do. You must feel called to do this job called public servant. For nobody chooses to walk in the midst of danger. 
You must understand that you must rely upon training. that you cannot control but you can control you and that's what we're called to do is to to discipline ourselves so that everything that we do is for the good and the justice of others public service we're all called and we must realize that God called us to something so here we are I ask that you In the days ahead, God says, do not be afraid. The days ahead, they're filled with loneliness. There are times you're going to want Daryl by your side and and you reach for him and he's not there. There's time you want to hear his voice, see his smile, and and he won't be there. And God says, don't be afraid to face the days coming ahead, for I am with you. I am with you and I'm with you always. So rely upon the God who is always present. So we need leaders in our community and and far chief and your command staff. We need you to lead today. You have men and women under your care. You've been given authority and you must lead with compassion and with justice and with love. You must give them permission to, to mourn and to grieve so that they can be present to others. For you know when we mourn and we fail to mourn and grieve, we become what we call in blue, we become callous. We, become, we begin to treat other people the same way, and, and we just simply can't afford to do that in public service. So command staff, we need you to be credible witnesses of what God can do in you. Credible witnesses of what it means to live that life called public servant, to live that creed that I will protect and save. Those who in the fire department for more than 20 years. You remember that fateful day on Laidlaw Avenue in Bond Hill when we lost our brother Oscar. And here we are losing another brother. You know, you can go a lifetime of public service and never lose someone in the line of duty. And here we are gathered mourning another brother. Oh, and we recall as soon as it happens, all of that rushes back on us. And we simply have to be attentive to that which is in us is to stay steady. There are young men and women underneath your care and you must example for them what it means to not be afraid. For there is another call coming where you have to walk into that darkness, that smoke, that fire. And we need you as public servants who've said, I'm going to do this, but do it without fear. You know, you can have reverence for fear, but you can't be afraid of fear. Someone say amen. You can have reverence for fear, but you can't be seized by the very fear that's in front of you, for you've been called to save. And we have uh, young men and women of the last two classes, and here we are, and they face with something that they never dreamed, never thought could happen. And at the beginning of their career, they can shrink from the situation. But you have a, when you have a command staff, when you have veteran men and women who example for them how to walk this line, they too feel comforted. They too know that it's all right, but they too must grieve. The citizenry of Cincinnati have surrounded you with love the men and women in blue. What a brotherhood, what a sisterhood, what a fraternal order. For we come to know in these moments there is no difference in us. Everyone circles the wagon and says, we are one. But that is what we work for all of our days, that no matter the the season, no matter the circumstances, we know that we are unified for we've each been called. So God says, do not be afraid, my sister music director, do not be afraid, for God has us to do what God has called us to do, to not be afraid. 
in the midst of pain, in the midst of heartache, don't be afraid. In the midst of loss of a loved one, of a friend, know that God is still with you. And for the men in blue, the women in blue, stay steady. We need you. We need you on that front line. Because there are those who won't do it. Those are those who weren't called to do it. But you have been called to walk in the midst of danger and to do it with great professionalism, with great strength, with great competence, with great love for what you do. And it makes a difference. If you pass through raging water, in the sea you shall not drown if you walk amid the burning flames you shall not be harmed if you stand before the power of hell and death is at your side that God is with you through it all. Oh, oh, oh. Be not afraid. God goes before you always. Come, follow me. And God will give you rest. So in the midst of hardship, God is there. Consolation, strength, refuge. A God who brings healing. The Almighty One. The One who says, I created it from the beginning of time. It was I who brought life. It is I who breathe you life. May you continue to walk, but never walk alone. For God is on your side. Someone say amen. So men and women of blue, continue to do what you do. For God has called you. God has called you to serve, to walk, to be credible witnesses of God's saving power. Someone say amen. Amen.
verse 12 and 13. Jesus says to his disciples, This is my commandment. Love each other in the same way I have loved you. There is no greater love than to lay down one's life for one's friends. Will you please stand as we offer our prayers? O oh God and, and Almighty Father, He raised Christ His Son from the dead. Now let us with confidence ask Him to save all of His people, the living and the dead. For Dale Gordon, when baptism was given the pledge of eternal life, they may now be admitted to the company of the saints. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For our deceased relatives and friends, especially Daryl's parents, John and Minerva Gordon, and for all who have helped us and mentored us, may they have the reward of the goodness. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For those who have fallen asleep in the hope of rising again, that they may see God face to face, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For Daryl's wife, Angela, and his children, Angelique, Chelsea, and for the host of relatives, for the CFD family, Heavy Rescue 14, Heavy Rescue 19, and friends, 
that they may be consoled in their grief by the Lord. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For all of us assembled here to worship in faith, that we may be gathered together again in God's kingdom, we pray to the Lord. Lord. O oh Lord and most holy God, giver of peace and healer of souls, hear the prayers of the Redeemer, Jesus the Christ, and the voices of your people whose lives were purchased by the blood of the Lamb. Forgive the sins of all those sleep in Christ and grant them a place in the kingdom. We ask this through Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. And the God, his son, Jesus, taught his disciples, and we continue down through generations to pray, Our Father, who art Lord in heaven, heaven, hallowed Lord be thy name. name. Thy kingdom, kingdom come, come. Thy, thy will, will be done, done on earth as it is in heaven. heaven. Give us Bless this day our daily bread, bread, and forgive us our trespasses, trespasses as we forgive, forgive those who trespass, trespass against, against us. And lead us not into temptation, temptation, but deliver, deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, kingdom the power, power, and the glory, glory now, now and forever. And forever. Amen. Amen. Please be seated. Before we go our separate ways, let us take leave of our brother Darrell. May our farewell express our affection for him. May it ease our sadness and, and strengthen our hope. One day we shall joyfully greet him again when the love of Christ, which conquers all things, destroys even death itself. of God come to his aid come to meet him angels of the Lord receive his soul and present him to God to God the who called you take you to himself may he angels lead you to Abraham's side receive his soul and present him to God to God the most high receive his soul and present him to God, to God the most high. Give him eternal rest O Lord, and may your light shine on him forever. Receive. 
receive his soul and present him to God, to God the Most High. Receive his soul and present him to God, to God the Most High. To you, O oh Lord, we commend the soul of our brother, Daryl Eugene Gordon, your servant. In the sight of this world, he is now dead. In your sight, may he live forever. Forgive whatever sins he has committed through human weakness. And in your goodness, grant him everlasting peace. We ask this through Christ our Lord. Amen. In peace, let us take leave of our brother and take him to his place of rest. May the choirs of angels welcome you and lead you to the bosom of Abraham. And where Lazarus is poor no longer, may you find eternal rest.